episode of News Dump is brought to you by HelloFresh. On Thursday of this week, we were finally able to witness the answer to a question that has been gripping the world. Which would last longer, a head of lettuce from a nearby Tesco station purchased for 60 pence, or the recently appointed British Prime Minister, Liz Truss? Trussy. Uh, as you're all probably well aware by now, the head of lettuce was victorious, and Prime Minister Liz Truss has resigned amidst numerous economic scandals just six weeks after being appointed by former PM Boris Johnson. But them's the breaks. Almost like she was set up to fail. Let's see if old Lizzie can pass this egregious tax plan. It's kind of brilliant. She can slip it through because the Queen also died, so everyone's attention is elsewhere. The Queen very conveniently died. It was this Lizzie all along. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh Anyways, poor, uh, Boris Johnson, who uh, obviously Liz Truss replaced... Oh, yeah, I assume he's uh, partying it up right now. Well, yeah, you're actually right. He oh. couldn't be reached because... Uh, He's currently on an incredibly well-timed vacation in the Caribbean, where he is soaking up the rays without a care in the world. Ooh, I hope he's using sunscreen, because, I mean, that man in the sun. He needs to look like Mark Zuckerberg, like, we're just caking it Boris, off. A man like Boris Johnson could only exist in a place like Britain, where the clouds cover the sky uh, 300 days a year. I, a he'd, person he'd turn like, into dust otherwise. Boris Johnson, to me, seems like the type of person who does not leave the resort. So he probably doesn't Absolutely have to worry about the sun. Not. The beach. Why, they've got a perfectly good infinity pool right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but back to the real story here. The head of lettuce. Yeah. Heads of state? No. Heads of lettuce. My new friend. That lettuce, which will live in infamy alongside Liz's incredibly short tenure, was a live stream started as a joke in response to an article from The Economist just over a week ago, which stated, however long she now lasts in office, she is set to be remembered as the prime minister whose grip on power was the shortest. Ms. Truss entered Downing Street on September 6th. She blew up her own government with a package of unfunded tax cuts and energy price guarantees on September 23rd. Take away the 10 days of mourning after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, and she had seven days in control. This is roughly the shelf life of a lettuce. <laughs> it's, when you take into consideration the national period of mourning, it is nuts. This, this woman was, uh, you know, God bless her for breaking the glass ceiling, but in power for seven days before they were like, oh, okay, all right. It's cool. I mean, it's it's like Andy Warhol said back in the 60s, uh, in the future, everyone will be prime minister of Great Britain for seven days. Which is actually, it could do great things for the economy, considering it looks like Liz Truss was there just long enough to get the uh, guaranteed for life wage. Uh, which Work smarter, not harder, guys. You know, if they just do it, uh, a new prime minister every week, you know, yeah. the population of Britain, not that big compared it's, to everywhere this else. This is how we sneak in universal basic income. Just make every person in Britain prime minister just long enough to get that pension. Yeah. And also, like, you know, maybe like 30, 20 percent of those people might have a good idea or two that they squeeze out in that week. I mean, couldn't be worse than what's happening now. Britain, you guys have had this system for a very long time and it's. I think it's served its purpose. Uh, it, it might be time to try something new. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe just run the country by national lottery. How much worse could things get? I don't know. But anyways, the, uh, the Economist made the joke about the lettuce head, and then um, British tabloid The Daily Star ran with the joke by setting up a live stream featuring a head of lettuce dressed up with parts from a they-them potato head <laughs> so that it would look just like Liz. The critical race potato head. Exactly. Uh, there's also a cup of tea, some toast with Marmite, Ugh. and a lovely framed photo of Miss Truss alongside a uh, counter that indicates how many days have passed. Yeah, so here's the New York Times. In the end, the lettuce emerged victorious after Ms. Truss resigned on Thursday. Someone flipped the photo of Ms. Truss face down on the table, colorful lights swirled, and a recording of God Save the King played on repeat as nearly 20,000 people watched live. The lettuce outlasted Liz Truss, the video declared. Minutes later, a remix of Celebration by Cool and the Gang set the moon. <laughs> Are you really celebrating, though? Like, Yeah, it's only going to get it, worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh... I mean, enjoy the moment. It's funny, but like... Oh boy! It was like when uh, when we kind of celebrated uh, Pete Buttigieg dropping out of the race, but actually that just made things harder for Bernie. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was fun to see him fail. It was a little bit of, but the implication was bad. It was sugar and, and salt at the same time, and it's yeah. like, well, I'm not getting my not getting my dinner, so I might as well uh, enjoy this appetizer. Enjoy this appetizer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, 
Whew. Yeah, uh, I mean, probably nothing. But if you look at, like, the succession of, uh, you know, Roman Caesars, towards the end, there's a couple periods where they were just going through those guys like, That's the thing. Well, oh, that guy didn't wear those. They were just, you know, swapping them out willy-nilly. And yeah. it just happened to be, you know, towards the end. But, you know, could happen at any time. So, anyway. There you go. The UK is in its rightful place once again. It is... A global laughing stock. Yeah, as it they thought be. they were gonna have as their sins washed away with the death of their queen, but no. Yeah, in fact, I feel even less bad about mm -hmm. laughing at you because I know uh, that sweet old lady is no longer around to uh, feel insulted by any of it. She just would have her, so much shame right just now. Just her sausage-fingered son, whose feelings I don't care about at all. Are you telling me that Queen Elizabeth died for this? Yes. So that so that her country could be dragged through the mud like this? Yes. Cool. Uh, but yeah, we've got no idea what the hell they're going to do now. I mean, I barely understand their political system at all. I barely understand why uh, a political party whose members got rid of Boris Johnson just months ago would now be um, seemingly trying to get Boris Johnson back in the job they just kicked him out of. That I does appear understand. to be the case. Yeah. I don't understand what Britain is. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of newspapers seem to think that's a really, a uh, very real possibility. Uh, and yeah. Hold on, is that, that's is that a, Boris Johnson's that music? That is Boris Johnson's music. And uh, yeah, he's, I guess they want him back. Could be. Not the people. But it, the great thing about the UK system is it doesn't fucking matter what the people think. They vote for the parties. And uh, the, you know, the big boys get to choose who runs things because they're smarter and they know how to get things done. And they're just going to try the thing that they tried before the most recent thing. Yeah. So uh, again, back on the job, Boris. Yep. Mm. Yep. Though we would certainly instead. Well, he's, he's, he's riding a sea bike right now from the Caribbean. It's going to take a while. <laughs> jet ski back to the UK. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he looks like DJ Khaled out there. <laughs> it's a human powered jet ski. Yeah, because, of course. Uh, you know, the environment. Yeah, him and Greta Thunberg are on a uh, solar-powered yacht on their way to the UK right now. He's actually, the Caribbean changed him. He's going to come back with a little piece of braided hair. Yeah, he's coming out His like, own little miniature uh, drum, steel he, drum. He's walking down to Downing Street like Vince McMahon. Oh, did somebody say Boris? Did somebody say Boris? Oh, miss me yet? <laughs> He comes back. I assume just, my things are still there. I've, I've never had a chance to send my boy over to pick them up. Fully tanned. Just just awesome. Burnt. Yeah. Just beat red. Sunburnt. Braids in his hair. Henna tattoos. Playing his steel drum. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> the UK. I mean, they invented the office. And the people of Great Britain, their homes will be hot, hot, hot this winter. When the energy prices go back down. <laughs> I thought I got over my coughing, but you're ruining it. Um, so yeah, um, that looks like that's what's happened. Although after what he's been put through, uh, it's just as likely that Boris Johnson could just stay there by the infinity pool, sip his Mai Tai and say, no, I don't think I will. Uh, anyways, let's check in with the next presumed failure this week. Black Adam. Oh, jeez. So let's be completely honest here. You, if you watch our channel, you already know our opinion on the DC extended universe. But uh, before everyone jumps down our throats about blindly hating something, we're we're just gonna let you in on the vibes regarding this movie currently. Neither of us have seen it yet. Neither of us actually planned on seeing it. No. Also, I mean, we kind of have rock fatigue. He's a nice guy, works very hard, but it's definitely a lot of the same roles. Still, uh, there's a lot riding on this movie. And unfortunately, it looks like the reviews and the box office previews have yielded less than stellar results considering the predictions that were being made in the lead up to its release. I mean, you'd assume that Black Adam would do well just due to the fact that there hasn't been a blockbuster since August. And Bullet Train wasn't like, I guess it was a blockbuster, but it didn't seem like. I forgot that even came out. Anyways, let's do a little back and forth on Black Adam. Though, again, the negatives do outweigh the positives. And some of the f positives still feel less than stellar. Rotten Tomatoes, uh, yeah, they, they can get pretty generous with those positives. They're like, well, uh, it wasn't good, but hey, go see it. I'm like, all right, that's, sure. a, that's a fresh tomato. And I can keep interviewing WB people. Yeah. Uh, so from Variety writer Peter DeBruge's positive review, here's a positive <laughs> review. Not every DC villain deserves his own movie, of course. But when you have a star persona on the scale of Johnson's, audiences are likely to appreciate learning where the character comes from. All right, cool. Um, 
okay, that's that's uh, that's a fresh tomato. Look, if you've got like two and a half, three hours to kill plus previews, you could learn a thing or two about this obscure character. Yeah, this is the only movie that is going to give you the information that you have desperately been seeking. Been so curious about for so long about Black Adam. Mm -hmm. So see it. Helen O'Hara of Empire said, Dwayne Johnson and director Wam Colette Sarah are attempt to offer a grand unified theory of DC, mixing family film tropes with a protagonist who straight up murders people. The result is sometimes a mess, but it's a generally entertaining one. Okay. Mm, all right. uh, but now for some critics who didn't like it, starting with David Sims of The Atlantic, who says, Regardless of viewers' needs or desires, they've ended up with Black Adam, an expensive-looking shrug that conforms to the trademark dullness of all of Johnson's recent efforts. Hey, now. I mean, like I said, it's you could show me clips from a bunch of different... He had a little run there where he was even wearing the same clothes in all of his movies. Yeah, it was like Jungle Cruise yeah. and like Rampage and then uh, yeah. Jumanji. It's because like he's so hard. They he's to... filming them all at the same time. He's just... Well, and like anything he wears has to be custom tailored to fit his weird body. Yeah. So uh, they're just like, well, you know, it's just you still got that thing from the other... Yeah. Just it's put it beige. On. We can figure it out. Put it on. They're not here for to see your jackets and shirts. They're here to see your, Dwayne jack, the Rock your jacked, jacked up pecs. That's, That's right. what they're here for. That's right. Uh, Mick LaSalle from The Chronicle said, I don't even want to admit that it's an actual movie, but assuming it is, it's the worst of the year and one of the worst I've ever seen. Oh, come on. Uh, Phil Pirello said of the film, a movie full of undercranked slow-mo action and overplotted world building that delivers more information than emotion because the movie struggles to ground this world on the backs of characters worth emotionally investing in. I, I did hear that they do uh, with this movie. It's like they we've heard you loud and clear. You don't like origin stories. So within an origin story, we're going to not give you origin stories about like these five other people. They're going to they're gonna show up. It's implied that you know what's going on mm -hmm. because otherwise we would be accused of hand-holding. Right. Yes. I mean, it works so great in Suicide Squad. All they need is like a paragraph out of the dossier. And we're ready to go and a smooth sailing from there. Greatest yeah. movie ever made. Just a cool beat with a nice little uh, snare. Oh, drop. who's that? A new character? Ba -da, pop, Katana? Pop. Oh, God. Well, I don't know anything about Katana. Slink. Well, guess what? Her uh, sword traps the souls of its victims. And that's all you need to fucking know. Boom. Yeah. And I'm good. I don't need it. That's all the backstory I needed. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. Don't you understand? I understand fully. Did you ever see the second one? No. I heard it was all right. Yeah, it's fine. Compared to the first, it was a work of art, but uh, it's not a movie that I have rewatched. Anyways, D uh, David Ehrlich of IndieWire said, there isn't a single character here that doesn't feel like a cheap photocopy of one from Gotham or the MCU. Not a single beat that doesn't feel like it hasn't been audience tested within an inch of its life. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, so this is, uh, when you go see this movie, uh, you're gonna see the, the compilation, a compilation on screen of what audiences want. That's right. Finally. What the common man the wants. people. Yes. Uh, but yeah, by the time this video goes up, the film will have been out for about a day or so, aside from having a better idea of how this thing's going to do in the box office. And the targets were $60 million opening weekend domestically. So that's probably the number to keep an eye on. Yeah. Also, uh, and it <laughs> seems achievable. I mean, like, look, there's been a drought of blockbusters. Yeah. And Bullet Train did... When you're starving, you'll eat that slop. Yeah, Bullet Train did like 20 or 30 million, and this is a comic book movie. In theory, it should have no problem. Well, we'll see about that. Yeah. Also, not saying it's all related, just that it's incredibly odd timing, but the, the head of DC Films, Walter Hamada, he uh, resigned from his position the day that Black Adam was released. So, WB hmm. on the hunt for a new uh, head of DC Films. I mean, why even take applications? Just go I on Twitter.com. I will run DC, and I will be Prime Minister of Great Britain. They I will do all the jobs that no one else wants to do. Just for fun, like with the Great Britain thing, they should pick whoever has the longest Snyderverse name on they Twitter. They should put Boris Johnson in charge of DC Films. And Zack Snyder in, in charge, charge of, of the Great UK. Britain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We there we go. We solved the problem. Utopia. Mm -hmm. The world, if... Boris Johnson ran the DC Cinematic yeah. Universe. Look wow. at that. It's mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're sure that, you know, it's just more restructuring happening at WB. They, they love restructuring. Uh, they got the, the Discovery takeover, you know, a lot of redundancies there. So, so this might just be odd timing, but it's uh, certainly suspect. Yeah. 
Also, I think the UK would be fine with Zack Snyder running things. It's like the 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 country already looks how hard de- could it be desaturated. Yeah, it's everything. The food is bland. That's right. You know? Yeah. Sorry, now we're just dogpiling on all of our UK viewers. You know we love you. We've literally hung out with you in person. Some of you, the cool ones. Anyways, uh, we're also sure that a bunch of you by now watching this video have already seen Black Adam, so feel free to let us know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Uh, Just be careful to label things as spoilers if you do use them. Be nice to people. Um, Having said that, (laughs) Warner Brothers has already leaked what could be considered the biggest spoiler, so if you're online, you probably know. I know it against my will. But if you're not interested in Black Adam at all, you can play a fun prank on your friends this holiday Halloween season by just saying that you're going to see Black Adam and then bringing your family and friends to see Barbarian, Smile, or Terrifier 2 instead. A fun, cool Halloween prank. Uh, Terrifier 2 is apparently one of the most disgusting movies ever made. People are vomiting and fainting. So Yeah, but that's just marketing. That's how, just... how bad could it be? I don't know. My wife watched the first Terrifier the other day, uh, and she said it was... Um... Really fucking gross. And this one goes uh, apparently (laughs) much harder than that one. Yeah. So even the reviews I saw, a lot of which are very positive because it's it's just genre critics reviewing genre yeah. films. But it's like if you can get a group of people together to go and have make a good time out of it instead of just wanting to scare yourself alone. Yeah. Then it's That's fun. Always more fun. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Having said that, Barbarian is the best. Barbarian's out of the three. a fun one. Go in blind. It's a it it's a thrill ride. You can't spell Airbnb without Barbarian. That's right. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. Anyway, would you believe there's a far more interesting actual real-life saga that's currently playing out in front of our very eyes? That's right, folks. We're still talking about it. Hans Niemann, Magnus Carlsen. What will likely end up becoming the biggest drama in modern chess history? What's going on with that? Yeah. So Hans Niemann did nothing wrong, according to Hans Niemann and his lawyers, who have filed a $100 million lawsuit against Magnus Carlsen, Carlsen's company, Play Magnus, Chess.com, and Grandmaster Hikaru Nakumara, for what he claims is a vast conspiracy against his rise in competitive chess, especially when it relates to his matches against Magnus Carlsen, which his lawsuit claims were legitimate, but that Carlsen and the other people named in the suit started and perpetuated the cheating allegations in order to protect Carlsen's career and reputation as the greatest in the world. It's It's a lot. lot. It's it's a vast conspiracy. With many hands at play here, a lot of chains that could break at some point and let us in on the inside work goings on of the chess world. Uh, So here's some excerpts from the filing, which Neiman tweeted out himself, adding, my lawsuit speaks for itself. And boy, is all this going to make for a fascinating documentary one day, probably like six months from now. They're probably making it right now. There's going to be one on Hulu. There's going to be one on Netflix. Which one will you watch? Uh, There you go. In August 2022, Chess.com agreed to acquire Play Magnus for nearly $83 million and merge the two companies in order to monopolize the chess world. Carlson, having solidified his position as the king of chess, believes that when it comes to chess, he can do whatever he wants and get away with it. On September 4th, 2022, Neiman soundly defeated Carlson during an in-person game at the prestigious Sinkfield Cup Chess Tournament in St. Louis, Missouri. Neiman's upset victory effectively dashed Carlson's two remaining statistical ambitions, namely achieving a 2900 FIDE performance rating for the first time in history and breaking his own world record unbeaten streak in FIDE sanctioned events. These accomplishments, if achieved, would have solidified Carlson as arguably the greatest chess player of all time and made his burgeoning chess empire even more valuable. Making matters worse for Carlson, Neiman embarrassed Carlson by playfully taunting him during his post-match interview. Notorious for his inability to cope with defeat, Carlson snapped. Enraged that the young Neiman, fully 12 years his junior, dared to disrespect the king of chess, and fearful that the young prodigy would further blemish his multi-million dollar brand by beating him again, Carlson viciously and maliciously retaliated against Neiman by falsely accusing Neiman without any evidence of somehow cheating during their in-person game and demanding that the organizers of the Sinkfield Cup immediately disqualify Neiman from the tournament. So yeah, this is just Magnus Carlson, uh, you know, he's just watching the throne. He is. If he's this hogging is, it for himself. This is the lawsuit filed against him, but according to this... Uh, but yeah, they, uh, you know, I was all in on the anal bees, but now that I hear it from the other side, you know, the, anal the bees kid's got a point. were bizarre and compelling. This is fascinating. If there's an actual conspiracy going on with multiple parties, including the biggest names in the world of chess 
uh, like chess.com yeah. and stuff that are actually actively working against other players in order to lift one guy because it's more profitable for the sport. That is literally 30 for 30 shit. I mean, it's literally the King of Kong. The same thing happened with like Billy Mitchell because he was the face. The Reds, of, yeah. He was the face of uh, the you gaming, know, yeah. Gaming and uh, they're like, well, we can't. Twin have, Galaxies can't lose that. Yeah, we can't have just this random guy come in and beat him. You know, you're supposed to take the fall. I mean, it, the parallels are undeniable. But yeah, the, the egos, like the more niche the arena, the, the bigger and weirder the egos. Yes. Uh, you are the king of a very small kingdom. And if you lose that, what else do you have left? Nothing. Your, your king has been knocked over. So yeah, the filing continues, and again, we're taking excerpts here. The full filing can be found down in the description below if you really want to read it all. Days later, Carlson was scheduled to play Neiman again in the Julius Baer Generation Cup. Rather than seek to redeem himself from his unexpected loss to Neiman, Carlson, the king of chess, gutlessly forfeited the game <laughs> after making one move, and then issued a press release repeating his false accusations that Neiman had cheated against him at the Sinkfield Cup. Carlson's unprecedented actions, coupled with his unfounded accusations, sent shockwaves through the chess world and instantly thrust Neiman into the center of what is now widely reported as the single biggest chess scandal in history. Somewhere, Bobby Fischer is just being racist. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's in he's in hell. Just uh, I thought I was the biggest scandal. Yeah. And anyway, the filing goes on to say that numerous independent and unbiased sources analyzed the matches thoroughly and found no evidence of cheating. Uh, now here's where it gets more interesting, because the lawsuit basically claims that Carlson was the golden goose, and that the companies backing him would do anything to keep him at the top of the chess world, because any blemish on his near-perfect career could result in millions lost. Maybe even billions. Trillions. Yeah, while we're making stuff up, we could just say whatever we want. Uh, from the filing, and again, these are the words of... Neiman's crack legal team. Mm -hmm. And while all of this might be true, it's, it's Again, just, just their, their, side of their side of the story. These are allegations made by them, yeah. not us. Yeah. Nonetheless, following Carlson's baseless and retaliatory accusations, Carlson unleashed his media empire to fan the flames of Carlson's cheating accusations, drown out the legitimate evidence refuting them, blacklist Neiman from top-level chess tournaments, and protect, at any cost, his eponymous Play Magnus brand and status as king of chess. He claims that Carlson, Chess.com, and Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura all colluded against him to varying degrees in order to protect Carlson's position in the sport. And the main part of the filing ends with, despite the falsity of defendants' accusations, defendants' malicious defamation and unlawful collusion has by design destroyed Neiman's remarkable career in its prime and ruined his life. As a result of Play Magnus and Chess.com's collusion to blacklist him from chess, Neiman can no longer compete in any online Chess.com or Play Magnus tournaments and will not receive invitations to in-person events sponsored by Chess.com or Play Magnus, which collectively comprise the majority of FIDE-sanctioned chess tournaments. And yes, I wrote this entire legal document with my ass. <laughs> I put a Sharpie in my ass like the message board commanded, and I wrote this out. So yeah, there's the latest update on this outrageous chess scandal, which is either one of two things. Either a young up-and-coming chess player cheated in a major event using a butt plug or something to that effect, and he's risking his entire financial future on suing all these people despite being the one who's lying. Or we are literally witnessing one of the greatest sports scandals in modern history, an accusation that, if true, would throw the entire sport into question. Are the largest governing bodies in the sport fixing the results in order to turn a greater profit? It would be like if, at his prime, Tiger Woods could just claim that someone was cheating if they beat him in a PGA tournament, and the PGA would just side with him because, well, acknowledging otherwise would cost the sport millions of dollars. We got a lot of Tiger Woods EA PGA games to push this year. Hans Niemann is the new Happy Gilmore. Yes. I mean, look what happened when, when he came for uh, Shooter McGavin. If you're going to take Hans Niemann down, he's taking you down with him. I believe that prize money belongs to Mr. Niemann. <laughs> He needs a big giant guy in his corner yeah. at every chess event. Yeah. Guns don't kill people. I do. R.I.P. Jaws. Yeah. Well, still very funny to think about. He needs his own big boy. But it's time for a quick ad break before we get into the rest of the show, which is filled with obviously more crazy stories, but also a few updates to things that we've been covering. First, though, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. 
HelloFresh ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Plus, pre-portioned ingredients make cooking a snap and cut down on food waste. Have your pumpkin spice and eat it too with a rotating selection of fall-inspired items from HelloFresh Market. From brunch kits to a fall dessert board, you'll find everything you need for all your favorite autumn occasions like tailgating, Oktoberfest, and more. We're big fans of the quick 20-minute one-pan recipes HelloFresh offers, and one of next week's menu items is one of our favorites for a quick and tasty meal, the Mushu Pork Bowls with cabbage, scallions, and buttery rice. But if you're looking for something fancier, next week's menu also features the rosemary demi-glaze pork chops with mashed potatoes and roasted veggies. Ooh, I am ready for fall deliciousness. I'm, I'm ready to fatten up for winter. Mm -hmm. Not only do these meals look delicious, but uh, doing the dishes afterwards, it's going to be a breeze. So check out HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com slash NewsDump65 and using our code NewsDump65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that is code NewsDump65 at HelloFresh.com slash NewsDump65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Links are always down in the description below. All right, back to the news now with an update on the downfall of one of our greatest traditions. It's an American, it's it's part of our an heritage. institution. Yeah. Something we fought against the Brits. In the streaming world. To wars. have a right for, yeah, yeah. Uh, Netflix account sharing. A it's cherished, going. a cherished institution, one of many cherished institutions. There's we are throwing the bags of Netflix passwords over the boat yeah. to protest those evil Brits. So yeah, we've covered this for a few months now from the first rumors to the beta tests in other countries to the announcement that it was all over. And now we've got a countdown clock on the practice of sharing your login information with family and friends. Which reminds me, I, for no reason at all, need to call a few Gotta family members. Calls. Yeah. Yeah, so starting in January of next year, Netflix is launching a unique strategy aimed at putting an end to account sharing. And we have to say, from a business perspective, it is shrewd and diabolical. And it'll also either be effective in convincing people to stop or provide a massive influx of money from people who don't realize they're being overcharged for still having leeches on their account. Yeah, they're kind of just uh, we fixed the glitch kind of thing. Or they're not going to like shut your account down yeah. or restrict access. They're just like, oh, but oh no, that you, what you're doing is fine. Keep on. We'll make sure that guess, it's fine. Proceed. Yeah, yeah, Netflix is not going to block those people streaming on your account. They're just going to start charging you for them being on there. Mm -hmm. Which, um, you know. I'll say the people holding Netflix stock definitely benefited from this because this was the, the biggest the biggest single day jump on that uh, ticker for like the last year. I haven't checked it in a while, but I'm sure you still have a long way to climb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bought that shit in 2017 and it's, it's low. It's below what I bought it for in 2017. But yeah, nice little like five, six percent bump. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get back where we were, right? Come on. Come on. Uh, Dividends only for the rest of this recession, baby. SCHD, take me home. Here's CNET with more. Netflix is ratcheting up its efforts to get freeloading viewers to pay up and will start charging accounts for password sharing early next year, instituting a system that adds fees to your plan for extra member sub accounts when people outside your household use your membership. The company didn't specify the price of these new fees when it confirmed the plan Tuesday, but this scheme is already being tested in a few Latin American countries and charges a fee for each extra member worth roughly one quarter of the price of a standard Netflix plan. If Netflix sticks to that practice, then each extra member sub account in the US would cost between $3.50 and $4. So we should all, everyone in America should share one, one Netflix account. <laughs> And it would actually work out. And then everyone saves a bunch of money on their Netflix because then you have everyone in the country paying four dollars. Yeah. Instead of uh, what it hmm. was seventeen dollars, whatever the hell it is now. Yeah. Drop <laughs> drop your Netflix details down below. Let's get this started. <laughs> Hold on, Elliot. I'm getting a phone call. Hello, Netflix's lawyers. No, we were joking. Have you seen the show before? We're joking. You were. Anyway, in order to soften the blow for people who do want to stop being a, a drain on their family and friends, a leech, a parasite, a mm -hmm. vulture, Netflix will be launching a profile transfer feature so that you can transfer your watch history, recommendations, and watch lists to your own new account, you freeloading piece of shit. And not that it even fucking matters, because Netflix just recommends all the same shit to you, no matter, even if you've never shown any interest whatsoever in reality TV or food or anything like that, here's some more, here's some more. I don't want it, I don't want it. You know what I like. Why don't you show me more like that? Why do I have to go on the fucking internet on a third party website to find the movies that I actually want to see and see if they're even fucking on there? God. 
Yeah, I just finished. Uh, and yeah. what's with the autoplay? I. They, oh, you can turn that off. No, they they brought it back. Mm. I turned it off and they brought it back. Then you did something. You've messed it up. Maybe. Uh, yeah, but Netflix is like, oh, you finished watching the entirety of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. You want to see a show where people who can't cook try? Yeah, you've. Uh, I see that you've you've enjoyed all of Stranger Things. Uh, here's a show about really hot British people who want to fuck, but they're not allowed to. Mm-hmm. And they're in a beautiful island. So yes. Kind of kind of you're up your alley, right? No. You've just finished a beautiful nature documentary narrated wonderfully by David Attenborough. Would you like to see a show where people uh, aren't allowed to touch the ground? Yeah. And here's another crime documentary that's like 10 hours long, even though it should probably just be maybe two hours. We we thought that our old we documentaries... We really drew it out. Our old Netflix documentaries weren't exploitive enough. Yeah. So we brought in Ryan Murphy to really kick things into That's overdrive. That's right. That's uh, right. Mm, uh, and it, enough bragging on Netflix. I see that you enjoyed you enjoyed uh, the Dahmer show. Uh, hungry? Because here's a bunch of great food content. <laughs> Here, watch these Brits try to make a taco. Ugh. Oh, God. Anyways, uh, in another update uh, for this show, for stories that we cover, uh, the mysterious disappearance of billions of of snow crabs. Has it been solved? They're just hiding. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're probably wondering, is the answer both horrifyingly grim and also exactly what anyone would have predicted? Yes. They're just hiding, right? No. They're, it, just, they're, just, they're, just, they're just petting they, peek They scooped some sand over themselves. Surprise. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, if you guessed climate change, though, give yourself a pat on the back right now because it's probably the best you're going to feel as far as this story is concerned. Here's Climate CBS. changing to be better? You wish. Here's CBS oh. News. Climate change is a prime suspect in a mass die-off of Alaska snow crabs, experts say, after the state took the unprecedented step of canceling their harvest this season to save the species. For the first time ever, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game announced the Bering Sea snow crab season will remain closed for 2022 to 2023, saying in a statement efforts must turn to conservation and rebuilding, given the condition of the stock. The state's fisheries produce 60% of the nation's seafood. Okay, so that's bad. Uh, the crabs are all dead, but the water's pretty cold. I'd say as cold as an industrial freezer, perhaps. So you go down there and you get those dead crabs. I There's still meat crab. on those crabs. You just need more butter is the thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're not going to be, you know, it's not going to be as good as the crab. Really fresh, but they're still, it, it, is, it is still fresh. The dead crabs who have been decimated by climate change will taste fine once you realize that dipping them in the forced secretions of another animal yes. really lifts. Well, surf and turf. Yeah. Uh, the reporting continues, adding some analysis and explanation from Ari Fadiwa, a marine biologist with the Alaska Fisheries Science Center, who says that the shocking numbers seen today are the result of heat waves in 2018 and 2019. Wait, what year is it? The cold water habitat that they need was virtually absent, which suggests the temperature is really the key culprit in this population decline, she said. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Alaska is the fastest warming state in the country and is losing billions of tons of ice each year, critical for crabs that need cold water to survive. Well, but at least it's only bad for the crabs if billions of uh, tons of ice melt off every year. This certainly won't affect us in any way. It's just, yeah. Uh, quote, environmental conditions are changing rapidly. Ben Daly, a researcher with ADF&G, told CBS News, we've seen warm conditions in the Bering Sea the last couple of years, and we're seeing a response in a cold adapted species. So it's pretty obvious this is connected. It is a canary in a coal mine for other species that need cold water. Historically, an abundant resource in the Bering Sea, their loss is considered a bellwether of ecological disruption. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, it does seem oh, this pretty is, bad. Yeah, not just... People I was hoping it eating. would just be the crabs, but uh, yeah, sounds like the sounds like the environment is a uh, very delicate uh, balancing act, and um, this is uh, probably a bad sign. Also, a bad sign for those uh, restaurants where everyone wears the bibs. Yeah, mm-hmm. gonna have to gonna have to eat something else, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it should go without saying that this, in and of itself, has a massive impact that's going to be extremely hard to reverse. If not impossible. Uh, yeah. The last time you had crab, I hope you fucking enjoyed it. Because <laughs> that was the last time. And yeah, it's not just people eating crab who are going to feel the effects of such migrations. It's just another in a constantly evolving list of very clear evidence that we are fucking this planet up beyond repair. We are putting our dicks right in the earth. Like, crusty. what more do you need? And not stopping. 
But let's move on. Uh, we, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we didn't on. really mean for the second half of this episode to be such a bummer. So we'll throw this one in here to mix things up a bit, okay? Warner Brothers is throwing caution to the wind. They're doubling down on the industry-wide NFT obsession. Yeah, that'll fix it. By releasing the entirety of Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, as multiple non-fungible Tolkien's. Collect them all. I made that last line up. I, I haven't heard it anywhere. Came up with it all on my own. But you can have it if you want. Yeah. People will know it's from our show because of the blockchain. Right. It solves the sourcing. It's a ledger. Issue. Immutable. Non-fungible tokens. Tol Tolkien. Tol Tolkien's. Anyways, um, yeah. For more on this very stupid, pointless, and ultimately forgettable move, here's The Verge. For reasons that only Warner Brothers Discovery can truly know, the multimedia entertainment giant has partnered with Web3 firm Illuvio to release The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, in its entirety as a set of NFTs meant to kick off the WB Movieverse, an endeavor that makes less sense the more you hear about it. Today, Warner Brothers announced the impending arrival of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring extended version Web3 movie experience, a cumbersomely named re-release of Peter Jackson's 2001 film that will live on Illuvio's branded content blockchain. In a press release about their partnership, Alluvio CEO Michelle Munson sang Warner Brothers praises for its commitment to NFT projects and said that their partnership is poised to help bring films as NFTs to an even bigger audience of consumers. Fans of Lord of the Rings can now acquire, participate, and trade in an epic living media experience that will undoubtedly surprise and delight them, said Munson. Why would it surprise them? They've seen the fucking movie. It's truly designed for a mass consumer audience, not just Web3 enthusiasts, which is why it should and does feel so remarkable and engaging. No, it fucking doesn't. No, it doesn't, and it no doesn't. one cares. I mean, honestly, WB, they have little to lose with this stupid gimmick. It's another tax write-off. Uh, the, the crypto company probably made a sweet deal with the studio for a 20-year-old product whose budget has already been fully recouped a thousand times over. This is literally just a trap for people with more money than cents, but... The way in which the product works for legitimate fans of the series kind of messed up because special bonus features seem to be random and also locked behind arbitrary menus that only open based on what appears to be your willingness to keep spending. You know how you used to be able to buy a movie just uh, on a disc at the store? Mm -hmm. We got rid of that shit. Um, now the only ways to watch a movie are uh, you better hope and pray that it's on the streaming service that you have or you buy it in little tiny bits and pieces with uh, the most sketchy money ever invented. I do hate that like this exists uh, and also that DVDs and Blu-rays are going away because access to bonus features is extremely interesting in a lot yeah. of cases. The, the, the early 2000s was a treasure trove of fascinating insight into the movie making experience. I don't know why the streaming services don't have Seems like it'd be an added bonus. Features. HBO actually before HBO Max or anything like HBO yeah they and they still do it they have like special features for their original HBO branded content but like they're the only ones I know of that actually still do that Disney has been making sort of kind of like the same thing for their Star Wars series at least mm. But like going back to any, like watching a movie from you know like, like Lord of the Rings or like, whatever, it, it, like commentary tracks, like yeah, they're, they're that's all what we're talking about. They've already been recorded. Just like add that as an option as an audio track. Yeah, I don't plus know why you get that so like hard. classic Ben Affleck drunk uh, commentary track where he just starts like drunkenly swearing about the movie making process. Yeah, can't even remember which movie it's from. Anyways, uh, The Verge continues uh, talking about this, the the way that you're going to be able to interact with this amazing new technology. Along with a digital copy of The Fellowship of the Ring, the $30 Mystery Edition comes... <laughs> mystery. Okay. Do you want the just the ability to stream the movie, or do you want what's in the mystery box? Ooh! The $30 Mystery Edition comes with one of three interactive navigation menus modeled after The Shire, Rivendell, or The Mines of Moria, as well as a selection of image galleries related to that location, eight hours of special features, and a number of hidden AR collectibles. So this is the only way you're getting the special features is, well, uh, with the blockchain. The $100 Epic Edition oh, shit. comes with access to menus and pictures from all three locations. Oh. As well as an assortment of other pictures not found on the cheaper option. Mm, I do love pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're exclusive pictures. Nobody can see these but me. Yeah, these are So me. why are you showing it to me? Because that way I feel special. Yeah. But now I've seen it. Well, tell your friends. 
Uh, users will also be able to, uh, to view their AR collectibles on their phones after discovering them sprinkled throughout the movie NFT, which will only be viewable in a browser. Just the way, the way that it was meant to be seen. Oh, you bought the $100 Epic Edition? Can we watch it on your TV? This fucking oh, no. sucks. No, we can watch it on the this. laptop. This fucking sucks, ass. But after the movie, any cool uh, <laughs> AR things we found, we can go. We can show people on our phones. Yeah, I feel like I'm one of those little guys trying to get the ring back in its place, but I'm just looking for the content that I own. Literally not buying this NFT. Package. Oh, what's that? You need to inspect my wallet. Well, yeah, as you'll see here, I have. Oh, someone stole my Lord Wait, of the Rings movie. Hold up. Where's my Epic Ultra Edition Lord of the Rings? I love with it. my pictures, my the pictures that are mine. Where'd they go? I can only describe them in great detail. Ah. Now. Anyway, now what should we do? We have uh, two incredible videos that stand out because they're so awful. You can't help but laugh at just how ridiculous we are as a society. We can't possibly be taken seriously as a country. And these next two videos prove it. Clown world, as they say. Now <laughs> we will get somewhat somehow sadder. The, the sadder one out of the way, I guess, uh, first. And we begin tonight with the controversial painting by a Grant High School student. It's on a wall in the middle school building, and tonight some parents complained to the school board about its messages. I put my art up there to make people feel welcome. That's how Grant High School student Evelyn Gonzalez describes this mural. She painted it inside the middle school's Teen Health Center, and parents are concerned about some of its content. Some of the things that the parents were closely paying attention to included the trans flag on this t-shirt here, this symbol, which the artist says comes from a video game, as well as this symbol here, which she says is a Hispanic sign of protection. Parents allege the video game character is actually a depiction of Satan and that the hand symbol is demonic, with several even using the word witchcraft to describe it. As for the transgender flag, one parent implied it's a sickness. When adults pretend things that are like real life, it's a mental illness. With another saying it's discriminatory against Christian beliefs. We and our administration should uh, embrace that and get all of this hate material out of our schools because it is hate material. Here's NBC News with more. A mural painted by a high school student came under fire when parents alleged it was promoting LGBTQ imagery and witchcraft. Earlier this year, a Grant Michigan High School sophomore won a contest to brighten up the middle school health center, according to a statement from Grant Public Schools. GPS says the student received approval to paint images of smiling children and as well as the message, stay healthy. In the painting, there are three children. A boy is seen in a light blue, pink, and white t-shirt, the colors of the transgender pride flag. A girl wears pink, royal blue, and purple, the colors of the bisexual flag. And a second girl is in rainbow pride colors. I mean, I choose to believe they did do this on purpose. And, Just to piss people And that's awesome. Yeah, Good I, for them. If that was the case, I think that's awesome. I, I would like to think this being a high schooler, probably done with the best of intentions. Yeah. But I would love it if it was the other way around. But also, it's like, there's so many color combinations to the uh, various strains of LGBTQ that, like, you're going to find them. If well, you go no, looking like, for them, you're going like to find them. It's like we said them. months ago, the, 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 the Lives Matter people have turned the American flag into the pride flag. Yeah. Because they keep coming up with people that they have to defend they, for no reason. They keep adding new yeah. thin lines, and it and the, in the end, they step back, and they're like, oh, God, we made a fucking rainbow flag. Yeah, shit. So <laughs> we're a gay bar now. So, look. Yeah. Just, I wish people could just leave well enough alone, but obviously that's not going to happen. So here's more. At a school board meeting on October 10th, parents accused a student artist of promoting witchcraft by including the Hamza hand, as well as the video game character that bears the likeness of a demon. The Hamza hand is like the hand with the eye in it? Yeah, that's not fucking witchcraft. Uh, the, the game character they're talking about is from Genshin Impact. So, uh, one man at the meeting called the mural hate material. What? Tracy Hargraves, who has two children in the Grant Public School System, came to the defense of the student artist. I like how they point out that they're like, this woman specifically was able to confirm that she had kids who go yeah. to this school district. Yeah. So we talked to her. Here's what she said. I am a conservative, right-wing, gun-loving American, Hargraves declared at the meeting, and I've never seen more bigoted people in my life. Oh, here it goes. Uh, in, a t in an interview with Today.com, Hargraves said, the meeting turned into a hate fest. Usually there are 10 people at these meetings. 50 showed up. It wasn't even about the mural. People were talking about how we need to pray the gay away. 
So this this woman who actually does have kids that go to the school district, who self proclaimed, like I love guns, I love right. Jesus, and I fucking love this country. And these people are insane. Yeah, well, um, sounds like Antifa to me. And, and and it's clearly so obvious. And this is a first hand account of just being like, yeah, typically at these meetings, like no one shows up. Yeah. And now, because of this issue, there's 50 people here who I guarantee if you went through, none of them have kids at the school. Yeah, I saw, I heard about this mural on Facebook, and I, I'm retired, so I had some time to kill, so I just drove across two state lines to come here and you just get, get the rage out. I also love that, like, their hatred of this mural comes guaranteed, verifiably, through secondhand information, either pictures, videos, or, or other people talking, yeah. because the people that are upset about this mural in a middle school aren't probably legally allowed in that middle school because they're too old and they don't have kids that go there. Yeah, or other reasons. Or they could be a GOP candidate in Arizona who just was feeling a little stressed and had to pull over and make things right with himself. Yeah, it happens. Uh, we might talk about it on Weekly Weird News. It's disgusting, but uh, that's also something that happened this week. Anyway, uh, this last one here is old enough and ridiculous enough that we can all laugh at it by now, right? Yeah, I think we covered this when it happened. I think but, we did. Uh, you know, two years on, looking back, it's just, it's one of those things that's like, wow, we really lived through that insane bullshit. So Parker Malloy recently posted a video to Twitter from the olden times two years ago when the pandemic was raging into its first deadly fall. Everyone was still being extremely careful. People were still locked away in their homes and it was up to local officials to keep everyone informed, but also entertained. Leading to this incredible footage from October of 2020, where a woman dressed as a clown has to read off the latest COVID infections and death numbers. Enjoy. I thought we'd start by giving you a quick update on where we are as a state with COVID-19. As of today, there have been 38,160 cases of COVID-19 in Oregon, with 390 new cases being reported today. Sadly, we are also reporting three deaths today, bringing the statewide total for COVID-19 related deaths to 608. Simpler times. You know, now we're the clowns. <laughs> we're all the clowns. <laughs> We live in clown world now. Oh, anyways, uh, sorry to leave on a uh, kind of a downer note. But oh well, you'll be back for Weekly Weird News, and we'll have much more fun things to talk about, probably. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please watch uh, yesterday's episode, where at one point I look extremely high because I desperately had to cough. Not COVID, still. Keep testing. Uh, and I, st I, I literally look like I'm fucking just got done crying. But yeah. uh, my, my aunt, the only person in my family who watches the show, reached out made sure I was okay, and also thanked me for defending South Dakota. Okay. She's not one of the crazies up there, though, so it's fine. All right. Still fewer people than uh, on uh, you're not, Metaverse. You're not wrong. Anyways, yeah, that video is up there alongside uh, just, if you're not up to speed on the Kanye stuff, you're living under a rock, watch the videos. Check out both of those, and we'll see you soon for Weekly Weird News.